Hello, everyone. This is uh, Wampire hey. and uh, Sensei Rick. <laughs> and we are... Dude, so we went from Bruce Lee to the Ninjas and uh, Van Damme, Seagal. And so now, dude, we got to talk about Van Damme and Seagal together now. Van and Seagal, yes. These yes. guys are blockbusters, man. Yes. They're the hit makers. Oh, yeah. Late 80s, early, early 90s, they were the king of action movies in Hollywood. Yeah, I was telling you that, that this is what, uh, when I wanted to have like a comparison, uh, if I was renting a video, because back then you had to rent videos, so if I was renting a video, yeah. I was going to look at it and say, is this as good as a Steven Seagal? Okay, no. Is this as good as a Van Damme? Those <laughs> guys were were the, that, uh, bat, um, how do you say, you know, my... Go the to bar. for the A list. Yeah, yeah. They, they they were the bar. They set the bar. Yeah, very. Because there high. were other people out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. Uh, I love Perfect Weapon, but I don't think that Jeff Speakman is on the level. He's a legit martial artist too. He's got yes. his school and all that, but yes, he wasn't a Hollywood star like uh, Seagal. He was supposed to. He was supposed to be in Speed. Did you know that? The Keanu no, Reeves. I didn't know that. Wow, he was going to be Keanu? Yeah, in Speed. So if he had gotten that role, he that may have launched him to Seagal Van Damme status, but it uh, maybe never happened. Maybe it would have. Maybe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but it, it because Speed did really well. I remember back then, we were in college, everybody was talking I, about it. Speed, man, it was awesome. <laughs> I, and uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, I love Sandra Bullock from that movie. Like, that pretty much launched her, right? That yeah, launched her career, like so... Yeah, it was so cool with his. But anyway, um, yeah. the, the A list level of Seagal and and Van Damme movies was just so awesome because we were talking about Chuck Norris too. Yeah, a little. Ch Chuck Norris, you know he, uh, I, you know the era. I I think it was the timing. It just mm -hmm. late eighties, early nineties. It was they needed a, not just an action hero. They needed a martial arts action hero. We've already seen Stallone and Arnold. And we, we yeah. got to see the in, immense 80s yeah. action from those see, two. Yeah, I kind of feel like Chuck Norris was sort of like the like the Stallone-Arnold mix of the martial arts. He wasn't, but he wasn't quite like breaking into the martial arts genre by itself. He was still doing that raw action, yeah, like the um, G.I. Man action, mm -hmm. that kind of, you and know, Army Man action. Maybe. These guys are doing martial arts movies. Right, right. And and the Chuck maybe like passed the baton to... Absolutely, yeah. He's sort of like the, the transition guy. Yes. Like he's a star on his own, but he sort of makes it to B level, B plus in my, in my scale. Not an A-lister for a martial arts actor. Although Chuck Norris is on a whole other level on his own. You can look at him on the internet, all the of jokes. Of course cool stuff but yes uh, and but Van Damme and, and and Seagal again if I was at the video store in 1990 yeah I was looking at some cheap you know knockoff uh, Lorenzo Lamas movie yeah and I'm thinking no Lorenzo Lamas isn't uh he's great isn't but the, not at the Damme. level yeah not not at the level right so yeah for for sure the the Van Damme and the Seagal the two Hollywood kings right there yeah and and it's martial arts. You can't separate those guys from martial well, arts. What was it about them that, <sighs> that like made them special to you or to me? I don't know. Cause they got like, it's, it's not just you and me. It's there's everybody out there that loves yeah. the world. These movies. Yeah. Like you can see all the YouTube channels. People model themselves after these people. Yes. And, and it's crazy because, uh, you know, I mean, you don't see the Lorenzo Lamas channel. No, you like, don't. You don't. You know, and, you know, people really like the martial arts. So Van Damme was like, he was like uh, Arnold with with the muscles, not as big as Arnold, not as prestigious, obviously, not uni Mr. Universe. Yeah, he wasn't material. a bodybuilder. No, uh, but he fit in. Like he looked like a but, bodybuilder. Yeah, he was yeah, physically, yeah. and it, that kind of doubles over with the Bruce Lee being. Yeah, I remember awesome. being a kid. Like, yeah, I, I said, man, like, I'm, I can't be like Arnold, but I could definitely be like Van Damme. And you know, I mean, I did like some weightlifting, <laughs> and so I got a little, 
you know, like a little bit of the, but I, Van Damme was my go-to because I wasn't going to be grow six foot three, like Arnold right. or, but I, I could be in that five foot range there, like Van Damme. I think he was like five, eight, you know, I'm five, three, five, four. Okay. So it's, it's not that far off for me. And, you know, I could be, that was my thing in high school. I was like, okay, I could be like Van Damme. So, so it was right there within reach. I think a lot of kids were like that. A lot of people growing up saw these guys more yeah. than just uh, movie stars where you could get inspired. There mm-hmm. wasn't in influencers back then. These were the influencers. This was the yes the, the culture of like our internet. For you know, sure. It was like movies and I want to be like this guy. Come on, man. Did you, did you do the splits back in the day? Absolutely, man. Are you kidding? Like. My mom and dad would get mad because I would like put the chairs. I think I might have bent like a a thing, like a handle on the chair. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. Like, dude, I I remember at the Aikido class in in college, you were flexible, you know. Yeah, I, I yeah. Like, that. and remember, like, I even like you were like, hey, can you do the flip? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. And like, I just like went and did it, and, like landed right into like an Aikido like drop fall. Like it's it. You just got to try and I was, I was pushing my body and it's because of these movies, man. It's because of Van Damme and because of Seagal. And certainly like we mentioned, Bruce Lee and the, and the, you know, antecedent, but the older, older generation. Yeah. But these guys were the guys. For sure. So now why don't we go into like, okay, the difference in, because both of their films, Van Damme, and Seagal, very different, very, you very You think they were different. competing with each other? For sure, without a doubt. Without, they do, you know, they're number one in Hollywood, both of them. They're looking at each other just like Arnold and Stallone did, you know? Well, I love that Arsenio Hall, like, brings it up. Like, we'll talk about that later. They but. both came out on Arsenio Hall, both I know, of them, like, right? Van Damme's, like, got, like, the vest, like, you know, it's like, no, no shirt. shirt. Yes, yes. Yeah, just the vest on, the, the denim. You know, talking about Ar- Arsenio, though, like they in in the movie um, Coming to America, they've got a martial arts sequence in the training. So martial arts had already taken a, a different all, all over, yeah, a different uh, role in movies from the nineteen sixties through the seventies with with uh, Bruce Lee and the explosion, and then going from like sort of campy ninja movies. To a mainstream Hollywood movie about comedy where the prince and his friend, you know, this guy, Arsenio Hall, are doing martial arts. So I think Arsenio Hall, those questions when he's talking to these guys, it's he's genuine. He's sincere when he's talking to him, even though he's he's running his nighttime show. He has an interest. Yeah, he's got an interest in a personal interest. Yeah. So uh, let's why don't we talk about those interviews then? Oh Both. man, yeah, bring it up and we can talk about it a little and let's go back to the movies though right quick though. You okay. know not but that uh what it Seagal says something, right? Like uh well I don't think he's a martial artist, that's your opinion or well, they asked says, him about Van Damme and yeah. he was pretty standoffish. Van Damme and other yeah. martial arts actors. So, you know, they so that tells you they were super competitive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's their movies, right? Like they're probably watching their movies and saying, well, Seagal chops a guy's hand off. So I need to do this. You know, <laughs> I need to jump, jump, kick and flip kick and do this in the air. Tong Po and the glass on the hands. Like, I, you know, it's it's kind of funny because to me, both of their movies are so different from each other that. Yeah. They could have cooperated, you know. It's it's not like oh, you're taking my movie role because can you see Van Damme as a ex CIA? Never, no. Never. I don't think Van Damme's ever come out in those, even those newer ones. Like it's he's he's not like I don't, this. I, yeah, no. um, doing a conspiracy theory like that and going up against like government agents. No, no that's, I don't that's buy it. Like Van I mean, Damme. there's I've seen Seagal movies where. You're 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 thinking like you've bought you've won the lottery. This is the one. This is the Seagal movie that's not gonna have a three letter agency movie. And you're like, yes, okay, look, there's a little kid. Okay, yeah, yeah, totally normal. He's like in an apartment. And then before you know it, he makes a call. Yes, 
I need the package delivered <laughs> here. And you're like, no, no. And all the, all the red flags are just, you know, waving. Well, But Van Damme's movies are kind of the same. Like he's, yeah. he ends up doing the, the helicopter kick all the time and, and taking his shirt off. He's like the, the it's classic Van Damme from back in the day. So yeah. I like it how these guys have stuck to their, their formulas. Their yes. Yeah. yeah. Formula of success. Yeah. Oh man, they're perfect. Because I love the movies. Right. Even the not- and, and both of their careers have been long enough that you have seen some, a few movies where they're, they've deviated, like uh, Seagal with the vampire one. Oh, yeah, After the Dark or whatever yeah, it's called, yeah, I, Against the Dark. I actually oh. like it. <laughs> it's oh, what, dude, I like it too. Like, I have it. <laughs> dude, oh, don't, oh, don't get me started. Yes. And uh, yeah. Van Damme doing, of course, Cyborg. I mean, that's not as yeah, normal. Yeah. Time and and others, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they, they have deviated and stuff. Remember, um, I told you, there's that one where Van Damme's um, got that thing with his, he can't talk, so he texts oh, that's with right. his phone. I got it on my phone there, but he uses his phone yeah. and the audio text of the phone That's crazy. to talk to the kid. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's way out of Van Damme's style of his, right. his uh, you know, flashy, I'm Van Damme. Right. <laughs> but like the Tom Cruise of, of, of martial arts movies. Okay, so back in the day, did you prefer one guy more? Back in the day, not today, but back then, in the 90s. Oh, man. Yeah, like when, when I started taking Aikido... Is it Seagal? was like Van Damme was took second place to to Seagal. Okay, what? Well, why? Um, why? Why did you pick Seagal? The style? Cause come on, I mean, because Seagal, the Aikido, I was relating to the Aikido, but Van Damme just took second place to Seagal. He was still top dog, you right. know. Right. Yeah. I, I said, hey, well, I I gotta do MMA. That was our MMA too back then. You okay. know, I was yeah. learning from these movies as much as you can learn from the movies. I'm I do real martial arts. I'm not just a pretender but back then when i was a kid i was pretending and and following along like almost every other kid watching these tv shows and these movies yeah so i enjoyed those aikido classes but i also took uh karate the goshin jitsu so at the same time so i was kind of like thinking okay i could do the van damme stuff but second place isn't so bad no you know? no no not at all like, not at all yeah so you know but how about you what were you into you were like a a mega van damme you like the kicks you know all that no i you know in in the training i i definitely did the splits and and uh you know uh doing the the legs real slow and and holding them up to different heights and stuff and that also comes from bruce lee right yeah yeah So, so that was easy for me to relate to and understand when I saw Seagal stuff, I was like, I don't understand it. Like, because I, I think I did a backwards. Like, I think I told you that I started Aikido, but I watched Above the Law after I had been in an Aikido class. So I was like seeing the Tenkan when he does Tenkan. Like, I wanted to do that. And I, I, I could understand what he was doing already. Yeah. And I was trying to name the moves. So it was like, I was in it and and going in it and learning it at the same time. It was like a follow along video. That's all, and then you'd see it in the movies. Look, he's doing the Shiho Nage, right? So exactly, exactly. And, Kotegaeshi right there, like so. It's right. I was trying and trying. Um, I couldn't necessarily name the kicks and the things other than like say roundhouse or punch. It wasn't as enthusiastic. It's not as technical. That, yeah, but I did in, love in the, the abs yeah. part. I used to make my dad throw the thing, like, you know, the melon, like, and it, are you ready to protect, you know, all that stuff. On the like abs was, from Kickboxer? Yeah, you, yeah, you drop like, fruit on your, on your abs. Kickboxer was, there. those training montages, as fake as they were, it was part of my little routine as a kid. Yeah. You know, it got me into it, man. Like, those guys, they were the stepping stone for me. I, I think they're a stepping stone for a lot of people. Is Seagal did the training montage, uh, at least in the early films, just in one movie, Hard to Kill. It, that was it wasn't one, his man. thing. It wasn't that... No. Yeah. No, no. So, so Not like Van Damme. Like, Van Damme did it almost like in 
every one of those early movies and you almost and it expect was, it from him yeah yeah it was like <laughs> he had the formula just right like you knew when it was coming like <laughs> you you were like gonna learn something you know like <laughs> it was cool yeah that, that is made these movies so special i think those because even in, like if we go back a little to the arnold stuff Arnold was throwing in his muscles. He was always throwing in weights, always throwing in that like uh, angle of fitness and mm. health. Mm. Like, dude, in Commando, he's doing uh, martial arts with his daughter. He's teaching. Oh, it he's her. absolutely yeah. doing martial arts with Alyssa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alyssa Plano, and, and and so you see that. But again, it's like the martial arts takes uh, from just like a tiny. Minor. little role yeah. in a major, major Hollywood motion picture to becoming major Hollywood motion pictures all about martial arts. Right. So, and that's Seagal and Van Damme that are doing it. I don't know. They bridge, they bridge the gap there. They did what Bruce Lee, the continuation of Bruce Lee, and just took it to a whole other level where you've got movies like The Matrix or, yes. or even now stuff that we talk about that it's out there even those uh super yeah uh, any action movie it's gonna have martial arts in it whether you like it or not because you're fighting or yeah. something because you know that physicality right there for combat for defending or yeah. or fighting that is martial arts so you know and then some famous choreographers got their got their biggest breaks in 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 with these movies, these A-listers. Yes. No. That's right. That's right. For sure. Like a Jeff Imada. That's one of them. Yeah. I mean, that comes to mind just off the top of my head. Right. I loved his movie, Hannah, where mm. where he did that movie. Uh, and, you know, I love the way he makes the martial arts in that one. Uh, Book of Eli, Born Identity. Yeah. Totally. I mean, the list these goes are like, on and like on. my hits right there, like the go-to movies for, yeah. <laughs> again, legit, legit moves. Yes. Yes, and, yes. So, and, and also, like, uh, you notice the people kind of, like, uh, supporting some some of the same... Um, you see a, a little bit of the same stars in different uh, movies, recur, uh, recurring stars or recurring support support staff. Like Paco from Bloodsport. He's also yeah. in some of yeah. Van Damme's other... Same with the Tong Po guy, mm -hmm. you know. It's, and and De Gaulle, like, he had the same kind of... Uh, Ukes, or they were probably like his students. Yeah, right. Because those early movies, he's really throwing people. They're doing the drop fall. That doesn't look fake. Oh man, that the clothesline that is brutal. Yeah, yeah. So I watched. Uh, I read a headline because sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, we're gonna talk about these people. So I like to be as as uh, genuine and and as me as I can. But this time I typed in Seagal's name on, on Google and I'm like, okay, no, like I just typed Seagal's name and something came up about Charlize uh, Theron, the, the actress. Um, and she was saying like, oh, he's so fake and he, he's so uh, overweight and he just like hits people and, and it's not real martial arts. And so I thought, oh my goodness, like, wow. like, But he's big, you know, he's, he's just a big guy. His, his strikes and his moves. They are going to look like that. Mm. You can see, though, in, in, in even in his early movies, Above the Law is one of the, the earliest. He's doing the parry. He does that clothesline, you know, that he always does. He's doing it in that movie. He's just slim and thin. Yeah, he's... He didn't but he's doing it. He's doing the kick, the front kick that he always does, that he does in his 2020 movies. Right. The same, you know, parry... And and uh, and just take down. I don't even know what it's called in Aikido, but it's a it's some kind of zempo nage something, and and it's just a throw. Like it's just, but it's like a where you you don't even grab them. It's just you do the clothesline like Ric Flair. Right, right. And uh, <laughs> but from him, he's like six four, six five. He's a massive dude. It is a big guy, period. Yeah, so but it's gonna look a little bit strange to the non, non uh, trained. Yeah, yeah. But now, just like Van Damme, like Van Damme's kicks might look fake if if you're not trained, but he's totally real. Like you try doing one of those kicks, it's not easy. Mm -mm. 
that that real special helicopter kick that he does. And when yeah. he, I don't know what it call. I just call it that. But I think you it's know called the helicopter about. kick. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, yeah. but because Daniel, Daniel Bernhardt tries to do those in. You remember that like Bloodsport two where yes. Daniel Bernhardt makes like the the expressions, you know, and he does like the bod and everything. Looks like he's trying to do Van Damme. Did, did you get that impression? Yeah, absolutely. I I thought he did a good job, but if you make yourself into a copycat. You uh -huh. always, you'll never surpass. You know, you're always gonna be. So I thought he was very talented, part two, but he's he's copycat part two. But by the time he does Bloodsport three, he's him. sort of like breaking into his own Daniel Good. Bernhardt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that which we right. see in the Matrix that that you know agent in Matrix two. Mm. That's kind of like the where he's like finally like him. Good, yeah. But that guy yeah. got his. It's it's again. He's riding the coattails of Van Damme. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, or, or he, right. The success of those two guys, and then there was a sea of yeah. martial arts B movies that that yeah. came out, and I enjoyed those. Don the Dragon Wilson, movies. even the Lorenzo Lamas. Did I tell Lorenzo you? Lorenzo Lamas. Uh, his hairstyle, everything. Uh, Olivier Grunner, um, you know Billy yes. Blanks. I mean, just all of those guys. I watched I all told of you, it. I ride my bike and run in San Antonio with the water in my mouth like the Billy Blanks. The so. Billy Blanks movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, so all of that, Cynthia Rothrock made a bunch oh, of movies man, at the time, she's too. my babe. Are you kidding? <laughs> so, like, I mean, my height, you know? It, 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 all of that stuff was, it was the era, you know? But You were, um, again, what uh, many, many people today, we all have our, our YouTube, it's right here on our phone on the iPad, on your computer, back many, many years ago, in this time, you had to walk to the video store. So you had to walk into the video store and you were seeing life-size six-foot posters yeah. made of cardboard yeah. of Seagal looking at you, uh, these posters of Van Damme with his foot in the air looking at you. This is what you were seeing. So it was live 3D in your face. You wanted that movie. I remember the... Cynthia Rothrock with her leg up in the air, you know, yeah. and the and the thing like the China O'Brien movies. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the posters were walking through the video store was a big, big part of the experience of seeing the these guys and and the media the way it was played out. It, it's much the same today, except now it's more personalized yeah. on your on your phone or your iPad. But but back then these guys were. That's all you saw. And for a short period, this martial arts looked like it was taking over. It did. It did take over at that time. Yeah, it um, took over pop culture yeah. and, and uh, contemporary movies. It was like what, what people were making. It shifted from in the backgrounds to full-blown. Even for kids because Ninja Turtles and Ninja Tur Power Rangers totally. in yeah. the 90s. So yeah, because even I, for Power kids, Rangers, did you kind of feel it was similar to like Spectre Man and that other stuff from um, back then, like where they were dressing up like that? Yeah, yeah for for sure. I mean, it, it's based off of Japanese uh, tokusatsu films, and then it, remember uh, those guys—they were the U.S. version. Those Power Ranger guys—they were in the dojo training, normally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, right. yeah, absolutely. It was the era, you know, but. Now that we're bringing up the you know the, the the training and stuff like that, I gotta go into Van Damme versus Steven Seagal. What do you think of if they actually fought? Of course, you know I gotta bring it up. Seagal takes it all the way. You, you for yeah. you, Seagal takes it. Oh yeah, see, unless he's unless Seagal is saying like, okay, go ahead, choke me here, <laughs> which he did Seagal apparently takes it allegedly. All the way. Like, he's, yeah. They're looking at each other squared off. Seagal takes it 10 out of 10 every time. For, for me, it's a Van Damme would take it 10 out of 10 every time. I like it. I like your, <laughs> I like your, uh, I like your analysis. The, the reason for me, and, and I'll ask your reason, but, but for yeah. me, uh, if, if I may go first, uh, I'm, I'm thinking is there was a period when Van Damme came from Europe. He did compete briefly over there. I, they say he did very well and it was, you know, full contact or, or whatever. Yeah. 
But it's he, like champ in Belgium. Right. And, and he said he said over, all, you know, in various locations in Europe, he would travel to compete. Anyway, yeah. when he came to the U.S., I think he thought he was pretty awesome and he's going to be the next martial arts star. But he thought the way for him to break in was to get into Hollywood. So uh, to do that, he looked at Chuck Norris because at the time, Chuck Norris was the man for Hollywood martial arts <laughs> movies so he went to chuck norris's place and got to see a former world champion you know at that level and got to see how this guy does things trains there's videos on youtube where you could find van damme holding the pad for chuck norris yeah yeah i've seen that you know so so van damme got to experience that and he probably you know I don't know if if uh, I don't think he thought, oh, this guy's nothing. I'm way better. I need to be a star. I don't think he thought that. If anything, I think he thought, damn, this is the the next level. All right. Well, I need to bring myself up. I need to elevate myself up. So that's why I'm thinking, after he saw that, that he was he would be more ready for for someone like Steven Seagal. Oh, so Van Damme is like. Is like Ken Shido the second time he meets Raul. Like he's ready to take him down. Yeah. It, it's the dude. It, it's, yeah. The it's Chuck helped. Norris is behind him. <laughs> yeah. Norris is behind him now. He's powering him. Yeah. I so. can see it. I, I totally see it. And and of course you probably already know why I'm, I'm thinking it's and it's not for the reasons that you think like oh I'm like the Seagal's biggest fan. It's because I tell you that um, yeah. skill to skill, skill versus skill. Bigger always wins. Okay. And, and Seagal just wins this time because he's big. Because he's, he's almost as big as Donald Gibb. He's bigger than Donald Gibb. He's big. In Bloodsport. Yeah. And there's a scene where it's the guy that's uh, where, you know, I'm, there is there are people that I'm taller than. And so I'm taller than like uh, Mr. Lee, you know, the, the little guy from, from Bloodsport. But I'm not taller than Van Damme. And, and Donald Gibb, there's that scene where it's a long long shot scene where you can see them. And it's rare that, that you ever see these kind of scenes in, in the movies because we always like to yeah. think that our, our main guy our is hero six is, foot ten. Right. Even though they're five five ten. Yeah. So the angles are really important. And, and My Donald, point is that Seagal takes it because he's just bigger. Don, Donald um, Gibb, but, by, by the way, you, you were mentioning his name. Ogre, the um, yeah, what, what, Ogre. What, yeah. What's his face in Bloodsport? He was called Jackson. Jackson, <laughs> yeah. Ray Jackson. Yeah. I think. yeah, yeah. But yeah, but Gabe, okay, he's about six three. You know, two twenty, two thirty, two forty. What What you're saying is, you, they both have skill. So then, yes. the size is the factor, and and it makes yes. sense what what you're saying yeah. there. You know, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that the that Van Damme doesn't have a chance. I'm just saying that if it's if it's like that, then my my money's on Seagal. What about um, strength, though? Seagal's bigger. Yeah. But do you Seagal's think Seagal's bigger? But Van Damme has the muscles, and so he does have the strength, man. Like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so so there there you do have to, but but Seagal, it's still the. How about speed? <laughs> that's why I say like it's. <laughs> I do believe them to possess similar skill in their in their uh, you know from what I know and from what I see like but something in me gives Seagal the edge because okay. because of that he is a bigger guy that does have the agility he does have even though we just see him like that now he's older and yeah. he probably does have like the the black belt double basketball you know stomach there but uh, he, if they were together, and and you you know, time wasn't a factor in the prime. Yeah, in, in their in, prime, in, in like their prime. It, it'd be interesting. Yeah. But maybe maybe you're convincing me, and like it could be like a <laughs> nine point nine and well, a zero point one chance there for wait, Van Damme. Wait. That's well, a good I'm, chance. I'm, I'm I'm not here to convince, but like what I if, know you're not, well, man. But well, 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 but I, I I do a part of me wants to give it to Van Damme, but yeah, it just uh. I do believe the, like, I mean, Seagal, you, you know, you, when you're going up against somebody and, and they parry or they, they bust, you know, and they hit you, like, in, 
and your body's not conditioned, man. Like, and that guy can do those slaps like that. Like he's like, you know, Victor Marks or something. That you seen that guy Victor Marks on YouTube that does those uh um uh disarms on the gun like the fastest disarm mm, that that guy does steven seagal style where he would do that in above the law or mm. you know where he would just flip the but that guy does it in real life like okay you know if you're conditioned like that you never know like i think over time van damme did sort of also drink his own kool-aid and and believe it that that little saying that i tell you where it's just a comical saying but where van damme might have also gotten fallen under the influence of he was bigger than 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 he was because of his own stuff obviously that uh showing up there with like the leather vest on the on the you know stars do that rock stars do that led zeppelin does that right yeah but movie stars you know yeah seldom did you see that robert de niro doesn't show up on a with a leather vest (laughs) <laughs> you know, like, off the, like the, you know, the, the spaghetti wow. there, the whatever. Yeah. The, you know, the... No, he was beyond just an actor. He was a superstar. Yeah, yeah the sure. star, the rock yeah. star. I love yeah, these the guys rock star. Are... Both of, and, both of yeah, them. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. Both of these We're, guys. Seagal was like wearing a super nice suit or a tux, like, yeah. you know. It was yeah. tailored, like, you know, it was expensive. Yeah. And then went through that Native American thing for a while where he was wearing those, like, long, you know, yeah. And even yeah. even the, the Chinese, uh, like, Kung Fu type outfits and, yeah. But we did, this was, like, elementary school, too. Like, in elementary, we were having these lunch conversations. Yeah. You know, like, who's going to win? Like, who Mike Tyson. Who's going to win? all. <laughs> Or Van Damme, you know, like, or Chuck Norris. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude, okay, so if we were to include all of the martial arts guys from the 90s, right? Yeah. Who would you uh, say would would have? Man, like, you know, I'd like to see Samo Hunk fight against uh, Seagal. I'd like to see that, like. Man, I I saw uh, Sama Hung when when I was the extra in in, yeah? that, in that movie. He was the director, actually. Oh and, wow! Yeah, uh, I look. I took one look at the guy, and uh, I was like, "This guy's scary." And and at the time, I was confident in my martial arts. You were you know, a scary guy, I, I, you know. So yeah, I hey, looked at Sama Hung, seen- and I was like. Damn, this guy's a scary. So you think that's a good fight? Scary. Is that worth the ticket? Samohong versus wow. Seagal, the fantasy fight. I, I don't think it would be a match, personally. I think it would be a slaughter, but just my He'd opinion. He'd take Seagal. He'd take him down 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. It's just not I think the same. so. See? I, I can call him, man. Like, <laughs> but, but I, dude, Seagal's this, not this, my idol. He's not the no, he's I not mean, ultimate hero. Hey, you know, you know this, this is just nonsense talk, you know. It's but, just funny talk. I yeah, like it. it's funny I, I like talk. It. Um, you know, Don the Dragon Wilson was upset oh. at, at Van Damme because Van Damme, in one of his movies, maybe in the back, it said, you know, Van Damme was a, a kickboxing champion or, or maybe he asked, someone published that and said he was a world kickboxing champion. And Don the Dragon was like, wait a minute, that that's me. I'm the world kickboxing champion. Yes. So he's like, okay, you think you're the champ? Let's fight. Let's fight. Let's just do it. You know, let's settle this. No way. So Don the Dragon has been talking about that. So I, you know, you're talking about a guy who's one of the most, you know, uh, prestigious American kickboxers, one of the most yeah. best, you know, uh, I remember reading titles. about him in Black Belt Magazine. Yeah. And then walking through the video store. Oh, that's the guy I just read about. Yeah. Yeah. His movies are great. Yeah, I, I, like, movies. I yeah. like his movies a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Speaking of a world kickboxing champion, um, Olivier Grunner. And, and that guy, he could have also been ex special forces or or some uh, military over there you could have been marines ex-marines or something and world kickboxing champion yeah uh and he does a lot of movies i i like his movies too ju- just like uh donda dragon wilson uh, yes yeah have you seen his stuff olivia this was uh this he's familiar there's some uh also you know that his name is real familiar but not as like hot as the other movies like yeah. this isn't 
You know, this is again like this is not the level. Of it's a it's level. not right. It's yeah. not a yeah. level. Yeah. So because there mean, was uh, that other guy too that um, remember uh, from the No Retreat No Surrender Part Two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Lauren Avedon. Yes, yeah, yes. he had some cool movies too. And dude, he was the student of uh, Philip and Simon Ree, who were from Best of the Best. And uh, I know oh. you like uh, also, you know. I love the Best of the Best movies. Dude. And, and I get the cheesy, like, Best of the Best 5 and everything. like Best of the Best 2 with Brackus, oh. how awesome. Yeah. Best, yeah, Wayne Newton comes out in that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, and what's his name? Billy from Predator. R- oh so he yeah, the, the, he's like the brother. Was, he's the brother. Yeah. So all I mean, all of this once again is because Van Damme and Seagal were the top dogs in yeah. Hollywood. All this is you know happened. Yeah, because all these people were were in this scene. It was a scene. Yes. It was like uh, you know how in that um, Nirvana and Soundgarden, Alice in Chains. They're all from Seattle, mm-hmm. and they were all, like, in bands with each other before, like, the um, Eddie Vedder had that band with the Soundgarden guy. They were, like, Temple of the Dog and, mm. and uh, you know, those other bands. And mm. so that, that stuff was, because these guys were in, like, a grassroots, they had their vision, they wanted to do it. Seagal wanted to be a star. He came from Japan, opened up his school on purpose in Hollywood, like you said. Yeah. Back. Damn the same thing comes to Hollywood on purpose and they they did it like you know I think a lot of these other people may have been successful because they were already in the scene and and it was like a job so they were like okay yeah maybe their relatives were already stars but these guys were coming from a whole other background yeah you know Almost like other, they, they were from other countries. Come on. like That's right. You know? Yeah. Van, Van Damme. Right. Yeah. The American dream. This is, this is, this is also what makes it special. It's because it's the American dream. Like I'm going to America because I want to be a millionaire and I want to be a star. E- even Seagal. Cause he was in Japan uh, with an yeah. Aikido dojo He's American, over there. Yeah. But like he comes from Japan. Right. He's remember like Japan's like, it's like, uh, homogenous like it's everyone's japanese yeah so so So. for him to leave i mean and when he came over here i mean by that time i'm pretty sure he he was specifically i'm going for hollywood i i believe he knew what he wanted already yeah so anyway uh man well thank you so much for you know talking about this stuff i don't know where we're gonna go next after this you know, I don't know. We've hit like the the top here. I think we got to pick another topic. Like, yeah, we got to go like all like, you know, maybe whole other world. Like some of that stuff we talked about. Like, yeah, maybe one of those cool documentaries or something. Right, right. Because it, sadly for me, martial arts movies after the night after this two, like where it, it, it decli- falls off the cliff. It declines it's, for it's, me. It's yeah, a cliff. yeah, absolutely. Eddie's, you know, Eddie and the Cruisers, like it, Eddie never returns here. This is the end for me. <laughs> yes. Um, Out for Justice was probably the last, like, you know, good after Seagal that. flick for I you. love the rest of the movies. I love yeah. Van Damme movies and Seagal movies to the end of time, but there was something special about that. And I think it was also because, uh, you know, graduating high school, going, going, starting college, time changes too. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The, the era yeah. had gone yeah. by. So yeah. we'll we'll end it at this note, and for next week we'll we'll do something probably totally different. So yeah, please check All us right. out. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Wembar. All right, thank you. Yeah, you got it.